that opening in our own hearts and that opening in our own consciousness, which is that prophetic consciousness. And the, that prophetic consciousness is something that is accessible to every creature, every person, every human with, with a soul. Uh, and the, the reason we do that prayer is so that that opens in us. Now the, the, the Borda happens to be this extraordinarily complex and beautiful prayer, deep, deep prayer that reverberates throughout us. It goes all the way from, from the man beginning to say, I am stuck and faced with my mortality. My hair is getting white and, and what have I done? I see my own faults and my own weaknesses and I'm distraught and, and, in, and in despair. But the Prophet وسلم, has come and I am now filled with light and I'm filled with joy about who he was. And it's this, this cure, this recognition that the spirit of the Prophet وسلم, is a cure to our own hearts as it was to uh, Sheikh Busiri, who was, was cured by this, this vision that he had of the Prophet, that the Burda is a result of. And uh, it is so beautiful to see it being done all over the Muslim world. Uh, no matter where you are, I was told recently that it's in Russia, or rather in Russia, that the, that the Muslims there also recite the Burda. I've, I've got a copy of one from Syria, and I know the people that produced this particular version of it have other copies that they know about or have heard about. And the fact is, it's something that's, that's common coin in, among those with, I, I won't say just the Sufis, but uh, just the people of heart, of, of Muslims, who, who love the Prophet very much. One question, of course, that frequently arises is, to what extent does this very traditional medieval instrument, which inculcates and expresses this most fundamental religious emotion, have a bearing on the situation of present-day Muslims? Is the apparent universal appeal of the Borda now being curtailed by the arrival of very different definitions of Muslim belongingness? And I think the answer to that has to be that let's wait and see. The Borda is now mutating into different languages, unfamiliar languages. It's in English, French, Dutch, German, even in Latin. And Muslim communities that are beginning to define themselves as British or French or Dutch communities are seeking naturally enough to develop literary forms. Despite this extraordinary diversity of expressions of the Borda down the Muslim centuries and in every last corner of the Muslim Ummah, the Islamic world, the Borda really represents in a very fine way the fundamental principle of all Islamic civilization which is unity and diversity. It's the same poem. The commentaries that are read for those who really want to see the mechanics of the Arabic prose and the meanings and the doctrinal significance and the historic references that it, that it alludes to. Um, all of that resolves to one crystalline point which is a Quranic commandment whenever the border is celebrated it is doing so as a form not only of dhikr of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and celebrating the blessing of, of prophecy but also as a form of ibadah insofar as any conformity to a divine commandment is an act of worship and in this case, what is being obeyed is one of the most fundamental of all Quranic commandments, which is delivered in no uncertain terms in one of the best-known verses of the Qur'an that we hear in sermons on Fridays and uh, in public discourses throughout the traditional Islamic world, which is أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صدق الله العظيم which means truly Allah himself and his angels send blessings to the Prophet O you who believe send blessings to him and send salutations abundantly it's in the imperative mood in the Arabic this is not an optional extra in religion, it is a fundamental commandment. We have to bless the Prophet. As a corollary, when we bless the Prophet, we are rewarded. And the reward 
is not just otherworldly, but it's this worldly as well. Each time we bless the Prophet, Allah blesses us. And this is also in the Hadith. Ya man lahu izzu shafati wahdahu Fahuwa al-munazzahu ma lahu shufa'u The Burda basically spread from Egypt uh, all over the Muslim world, but it, it particularly took root in Morocco, possibly because of the connection between the Imam and, and the country itself, the Imam being originally from Morocco, but I think more importantly because of the deep love and reverence that the Moroccan people have had, not only for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but also for his family. So there has been a deep tradition. Morocco is a country that was, that was literally founded by uh, a direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Muri Idris. And so there's this, this deep connection with, with the prophetic uh, tree, the prophetic line in Morocco, and the legitimacy even today that uh, the ruling family uh, has in Morocco is, is based on the, the king being a Qurayshi, being a Hashimi, being a direct descendant of the Prophet, and, and that's understood. One of the, the beauties of the Moroccan Burda tradition is that the Andrusian music, uh, which was a very powerful uh, musical form that originated in Persia but was brought ultimately to uh, Spain and took a deep root there, that that tradition, when, when Spain fell to the Christians, uh, many of these great musicians uh, fled to Morocco and there arose a tradition in Morocco of this Andrusian uh, singing which is, is based on this deep understanding of the musical structures called the maqamat and these, uh, these maqamat were used to recite the burda itself and, and each city developed its own unique way of reciting the burda uh, the one that we were fortunate enough in recording is the Fasi uh, tradition and it's done by uh, a group of Fasi singers who literally from the time they were children uh, began learning the Burda in this tradition and so in a sense it's really uh, probably almost a thousand years old uh, this uh, singing tradition not of the Burda but, but of this style and the Burda obviously written uh, in, in the 8th century, and so Hijra, uh, the 13th century uh, Christian era. So it, it's written uh, and, and sung in this extraordinary Andrusian style, and, and uh, Muhammad bin Nis, who is, is the, uh, the head of the, the Fez singers, um, he's literally somebody who is dedicated to preserving this tradition. He's teaching uh, children in Fez. He has a small school run without a budget at all, literally without a budget. I mean, this is an act of, of love. And I, I, I've known uh, Muhammad bin Nis now for several years, and, and I've just seen the love that he has for this extraordinary tradition of sacred uh, music in uh, Morocco and, and keeping it alive. And his own children. Uh, are are part of this. They they've uh, memorized the burda and and learned how to sing it in this way. <laughs> I wanted a classic design which embraced both tradition and also which reflected the time we live in. After all, a CD is a very high-tech medium. So all the different elements of the, the package, the, um, the, the graphic elements, the photographs, the, the choice of typefaces for the text, the marbling uh, which we used from Turkish manuscripts, it all had to fit together in a kind of harmonious whole.